Hi guys, welcome back. In the last video tutorial I showed you how to use the admin area options in the Premium Press theme to create your very own child theme and take a replica of the current site setup to create that. Now I'm going to uh, explain a little bit more about the actual directory setup for your child theme and we'll work a little bit on the styling options for your child theme. So if we look at the actual directory folder of the WordPress installation, so as we can see, this is the WordPress core file options. All of the themes, as you know, are stored under WP content and under themes. Now, as you can see, we've got the core theme, which in this case is DT, so which stands for directory theme, and our newly created child theme, which is template blue directory. So if we just open this up, we can have a quick look about what's inside. We have a functions file, a screenshot, and a style.css file. So functions is where we store all of the PHP scripting. And if I just open this up, we can see at the top we have a constant uh, defined as um, child theme, and that means equals true. And this basically tells the actual core system that we are running a child theme along with the system. We have a function called child theme underscore design changes, and inside of this function are all of the actual design changes that we saved as part of the child theme. Scrolling down to the bottom, we have another function called after switch theme, and what that does is it works along with the changes, uh, with along with the de design change function at the top, to save all of the design changes when we reactivate our child theme. And at the bottom we have this um, small function which is enabled when we use the demo option, which is basically just for our demo website purposes. So basically the actual functions file just stores all of the um, settings for our main website so that when we activate our child theme, um, the settings are reapplied to the website. If we go back to the directory then, we have a screenshot. And obviously this is just a screenshot for your, um, for your, uh, for your child theme. So if you wanted to customize your screenshot, you can obviously adjust it there. And we have a style.css, and obviously it's very similar to the functions file. This stores all of the styling options. So if we open this, okay, we have what we saved, which was the name, theme name, which is blue directory, theme author, which is off the website, a description, your author, which is taken from the email address in your account, the author's website, which is obviously your website, um, the template, which is DT, because obviously our primary theme installed, back to the themes, is DT. So that makes needs to match the same folder name there and the version which is 1.0. So obviously you can customize this any way you like. You can go ahead and remove all of the styles, modify them any way you like. Um, and obviously once you're happy with them, just obviously put them back, save your child theme and it will work exactly the same way. There are obviously a number of different ways to customize a website or any website that is. Um, and obviously if you are a developer, you probably have your own methods of doing so. Um, but just for those that are a little bit unfamiliar, um, all those are maybe just starting out. A very useful tool um, is the browser inspe inspection tool. So if you're using a browser that has that option, I know Firefox does and I use um, Google Chrome, if you right click on any of the elements on your website, um, there is an inspection element. And obviously what that does is on the left, bottom left console, um, you can hover over the uh, uh, HTML element that you kind of want to use or want to inspect. And if you click on it on the right hand side, you'll see the CSS element for it. So as you can see here on the left, we've got this div um, panel heading, which is the, on the top, you can see it's highlighted. And on the right, we can see the CSS. So we can see the background color is, is a gray. If I click on the uh, color, I could change that um, to a different color. And then if I just decided, okay, that's great, that's just what I wanted, I could just copy that and then save that into my styles file, save it at the bottom, so that obviously it's saved now as part of my child theme. So if I refresh the page, um, it's now saved and it'll be continued to be saved until I removed it. So it's just a very useful way of customizing the website and especially useful um, for those kind of small and tricky bits of code that you can't quite um, get from the admin or get from anywhere else. The browser inspection tool can really help you out a lot there. Um, so that's the basics of the styling options. I mean, obviously you can take it and, and you can go anywhere you like with it. I mean, obviously there's, there's 101 different styling options you can do. You can have background images, background colors, you know, etc., etc. So I'll leave that um, in your very capable minds. Um, what we can use next, if we look at back, or what I would suggest, there is obviously a lot of documentation on our Premium Press website. Under the uh, support, if you click on support and click on documentation, you obviously you'll get all of the actual latest documentation. Uh, the key elements, obviously, if you're customizing the website, will be the hooks and filters. So you can use some of the layout hooks um, to customize the options here, page hooks, etc. Now, obviously, I don't want to go into too much detail about layout hooks and page hooks, filters, etc. Because 
those are very core elements of WordPress. So if you're unfamiliar how to use a hook or unfamiliar how to use a filter, um, there are a number of tutorials online to show you in great depth and great detail how to do that. But obviously for the use of theme options, if you're using our themes and you want to know how to hook elements, you can do that from the documentation. You can find the hook name, etc., and do that. The other option, obviously, uh, which a lot of people do do, is just open up the actual file um, itself. Um, if we have a look. If we open up the actual core theme file, so if I go to DT, there we go, click on, uh, say for example, header. Okay, you can see all, a lot of the hooks here. There's a hook here, it says the uh, hook underscore wrapper before, hook on the wrapper after. So you can see some of the hook elements you want here. So if you're looking to specifically modify a certain element um, within a page, say for example, a header or the footer, you can just open up the core file, have a look at if there's any hooks available, um, and then use those hooks. All of the normal WordPress hooks will work as, as normal. There's no diff uh, and there's no changes made by the core theme. So if you're familiar with WordPress, then you should have no problems again using any of the um, core WordPress hooks. Okay, so now I want to quickly talk about some of the additional page options available. Uh, and when I say page options, what I mean is by creating additional files within your child theme um, to override the default um, file within the actual core theme. So let me explain. Um, if we take, if we create a new PHP file, and we we add some random content, so testing one two three, and we save that uh, in our child theme folder as underscore all of the um, additional page elements start with an underscore home page. Okay. If we now go to our child theme home page and give it a refresh, you can see now we've got this testing one two three. So what happens is, rather than using the core theme, because the core theme was detected that we have a home page file within our child theme, it's decided to use that instead. So basically, we could actually customize um, um, your theme, your child theme, uh, using your own CSS, your own uh, HTML elements, without having to actually use those from the admin area, etc. So if we add the basic hooks back from PHP, um, uh, sorry, WordPress, Right, the header and footer. Okay, so we've now got the actual core header and the core footer back. And as you can see now, obviously, the content is in the middle. So that for our home page here, we've got the header and footer and our middle content. And this is obviously another very useful way of adding and creating child things because now you can obviously modify the entire home page just from the actual file itself. So we can now go ahead and start, you know, adding some random content. We could uh, just put some styles on it, we could uh, text size is 100 and center it as well. So it's just a, another uh, you know way of actually creating content for your home page. Oops. Font size is 100, there we go. There we go. So you can see now we've got on that home page. And you can use the documentation again to kind of find out what, what the names of the uh, home page elements are. Under the left hand side, under the child theme, creating child themes, we've got this section about adding theme design files. And obviously, it just dem it gives you a, an overview of how to use it. And as you can see here, on, under the bottom, we've got um, home page, which refers to the home page which I just created. And you've got your own header, footer, page, single page, etc. Now, I do uh, give a kind of quick warning about creating header and footer. Previously, I've seen a lot of people create child themes with a header and a footer. And then what happens is when we create additional header elements within the actual framework, um, obviously they they don't understand why they haven't got that saved in their child theme. If you overwrite content, specifically the header and footer, in your child theme, then obviously it will not use anything that's found in the core framework. So you will lose any of the um, um, new features that we add into the um, core framework if you overwrite specific pages such as um, the header and footer. So if we add new he header options then you'll lose those because it's basically going to be using what's in your child theme. Which may be a good thing and maybe a bad thing. Obviously if you don't want anything to happen to your child theme um, then that by all means you can use that. But just a quick warning that's all. If you do decide to overwrite content, especially the header and the footer, then if we do create new options within the actual core framework they may not display when you uh, save your child theme. So that's just another way of creating content for your um, child theme. You just create a new file, give it the name, um, say for example home page, and then you can add the content directly to that page instead. And that's very useful for working offline as well. Um, it saves you a lot of time.